Hey there, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to analyze a typical tactical operation in the center that gives us a better position right from the opening. And that is quite a common. If you learn it today, I'm sure you're going to play it very soon. Even if you play some games today, you'll be able to play this idea because it occurs in move four and in, from a very typical kind of openings. So without further ado, let's jump right into the idea that will be explained by a couple of games. So stay till the end for the conclusion, because there I'm going to explain to you in some other lines, how can you use this idea to your benefit? So let's go. E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, Knight C3. We are trying to play the Spanish for knights after bishop c5. Yeah, the normal move is knight f6 and bishop b5. Bishop c5 is quite common. They want to keep developing their pieces, controlling d4, hitting f2, quite normal. And the intention is to play d6 and knight f6. But all of a sudden they might realize they do something wrong after knight takes e5. This is the tactical operation I'm talking about, and this is quite effective. Now, black has two ways to continue. The most common is knight takes e5, but actually you, we have to consider also bishop takes f2. First of all, let's analyze knight takes e5. That is the most principal. d4, and now bishop d6. Well, there is a short game by Capablanca in which black played bishop takes d4, queen takes d4. This is Capablanca versus Adams in 1909, a casual game. Capablanca played plenty of those games. And now queen f6. This is very common at the beginner's level. Black is trying the sneaky knight f3, trying to win the queen. For instance, if you play knight d5, the natural look in knight d5, you get punished after knight f3, g takes f3, and queen takes d4, winning the queen. So we have to be careful, and Capablanca, of course, didn't play knight d5. He played the strongest, knight b5. Yeah, in this way, he defends the queen. Now the queen is defended by the knight, but also he is putting pressure on c7. Yeah, his game continues with king d8. Now we have a very strong move. I highly encourage you to find it. Yeah, the move is queen c5. Yeah, with the double threat of taking on c7. And after knight c6, what was the game? According to the database, it's hard to believe. But Capablanca won the game with queen f8, checkmate. Yeah, to increase the legend. Okay, so as you can see, bishop d4, queen takes d4, is something really nice for white. Yeah, why? Because we get the bishop pair, we have the bishop pair, the small space advantage, that and the mobility of our center. And also we are very close from Long Castle, and I, I imagine this position is really, really, really nice to play. Also, that has to be really careful with the pawn on g7. Okay, instead, bishop d6 is more normal. d takes e5, bishop takes e5. And this was popularized by Oleg Romanishin, a famous Ukrainian grandmaster. He played it with black all the time, giving it, giving the variation a a seal of um, approval. I mean, it, it even became uh, prestigious and a lot of players try to play this line with black. And they say, okay, you have the option to advance the pawn at some, mo at some point, but we have three pieces. Yeah, the, the bishop is well placed. The knight is going to come here. Sometimes even the queen can come to h4. And sometimes they, can, they are able to play d5. So they, they saw the position with certain optimism. But nowadays we know that after bishop d3, 
a very good move. We place the bishop in a very nice square and in a very nice diagonal. Yeah, the idea, first of all, we defend the e pawn, but at a certain point, after playing f4 and e5, our bishop will be able to reach black's king side and even get some attack with the help of the um, light squared bishop on d3. So I'm going to show you a game played by Oleg Romanishin. This game was played in 2023. And it was played against a Polish Fide Master. The Fide Master plays with white. His name is Zwed. And Roman Romanishin plays as black. The game continued with knight f6, castle, castle, and bishop g5. Yeah, this is pretty annoying. The, the pin of the f6 knight with the intention of playing f4 and at some point playing e5. You can start feeling that black is not doing great. And after h6, bishop h4, now Romanishin decided to play g5. It's a little bit reckless, I would say. The, the king is getting a little bit exposed. Uh, another option is rook e8. I was suspecting rook e8. And in this, in this variation, f4 is really a nice one. Yeah, we, we are not concerned about bishop takes e3, b takes e3 because the e pawn is indirectly defended by the fact that the knight is pinned and our pieces are coming with queen f3, rook a, e1 and this is pretty easy to play. So instead, Romanishi played the reckless g5 and he was surprised in a very nasty way. If you want, you can stop the video and try to um, find the idea by yourself and okay, I'm talking about the spectacular f4. Yeah, instead of playing the simple bishop g3, what is okay for sure, but instead Zwed prefers to play f4, counterattacking the bishop and setting some very original problems for black. Yeah, the 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 idea is to attack black's king. The black king will be really exposed, Romanishin once wanted to play with fire and so so he's doing it right now and after bishop takes c3 f takes g5 is the idea something that should be mentioned instead bishop takes f4 is simply losing after rook takes f4 g takes f4 and knight d5 and the knight on f6 is going to be captured and every white piece will come to to the attack easily and I'm sure black is going to lose. So instead after f4 bishop takes c3 f takes g5 attacking both the knight and the, and the bishop the black bishop goes away with check bishop d4 king h1 now knight h7 yeah playing h takes g5 is made by bishop takes g5 with the intention of bringing all the force with queen f3 and rook a1 and the pin is something unbearable for black okay instead knight h7 tries to take advantage of the situation of white's bishop but actually is refuted nicely yeah this well played e5 yeah the, the idea is simple he wants to pick blacks on defended um, dark square bishop and really this is really difficult to meet after knight takes g5 i think perhaps this is the best move otherwise bishop takes g e5 is met with bishop takes h7 king takes h7 g6 winning the queen so this is really tough for 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 black the situation is not an easy one. So after knight takes g5, queen h5, and yeah, the the position is collapsing now. Poof, this is really tough. Even simple moves like rook f5, trying to bring more power. Yeah, threatening bishop takes h g5, and the situation is completely hopeless. Even rook f6 as well. Yeah, attacking h6, attacking here, 
Yeah, black is absolutely lost. So after queen h5, bishop takes e5, Romanishin, I think, is already um, accepting the fade and accepting that his variant variation is not longer playable. And he invites his opponent to an ending that in which he refuses. Yeah, he doesn't want to to trade queens. Yeah, this ending might be better for for white, but who knows? Even after this capture, I'm not sure we are going to to do something important against the king as once the queens are out of the board. So queen h5 is way better as the king is really exposed. f5. Yeah, there is nothing black can do to avoid bishop takes g5 and queen h7. So f5 returns the piece. Bishop takes f5. Not not even capturing the the knight. Queen f6 and bishop takes g5. Yeah, the game is approaching the end. Bishop h7 is threatened. Queen takes f5, sacrificing the queen. Rook takes f5. Rook takes f5. Queen g6. And once the rook comes to the action, the game is going to be over. d6. Bishop h6. Rook f7. Bishop takes g7. Rook takes g7. Queen e8. King h7. And rook e1. Yeah, the threat is simple. Queen h5 and rook e8. And the bishop cannot move because of the undefended rook on e8. So Romanishan choose to uh, resign. Okay, let's go back to move 3. And all this happens whenever black plays bishop c5. Yeah, they can do it even like this. Knight f6, bishop b5, bishop c5. And now we can also play knight takes e5 and gain the same kind of opening advantage. Yeah, one variation I want to mention that is really um, an, an instructive one is once we play knight takes e5, they are very usually playing bishop takes f2, trying to force our king. Um, I mean, we won't be able to castle any longer. Knight takes e5. But our compensation for not being able to castle is huge as we have the central pawns and the bishop pair. Yeah, those are more than enough um, positional factors to compensate the lack, the lack of um, harmony in our pieces. But there is one very important detail that we must take into account. And I'm talking about queen f6. King g1 and knight g4. Yeah, this looks crazy. The knight is hanging, but they are attacking here. They are attacking f2 and they are attacking d4. So it seems black is on the verge of winning the game and we cannot capture because of queen takes d4 uh, with mating 1, bishop e3, queen takes e3. So what, what is our only move after knight g4? We have to guard f2 and we have to guard d4. We are forced to play queen d2. It's not such a good looking move, but manages to defend d4 and f2. And we are ready to start um, gaining tempos with knight d5, h3, e5 sometimes. And we're going to enjoy our better center and bishop pair with a fantastic position, almost winning according to the engine. Okay, so this is something that I wanted to to comment because it's okay, we have to play queen d2, otherwise we lose. If we play as black after knight f6, it's quite common to meet bishop c4. Yeah, this is a very popular move. And surprise, surprise, is met with knight takes e4. Yeah, knight takes e4 and d5, bishop d3, d takes e4, bishop takes e4, and bishop d6. And here we are. We're in the same kind of position. We're about to castle, and we're playing for f5 or for bishop g4. We have 
a fantastic position as black. Bishop takes f7, king takes f7, knight e4, d5, knight e g5, king g8, and getting into trouble because now we're playing h6, bishop g4 sometimes, and e4 is coming. Black is having a fantastic position out of the opening. And this is very curious. Now we can use this idea in this variation. And not, not only this variation, I've seen this idea in the, in the Sicilian very often as well. So for instance, c5, knight f3. For instance, we are going to play a dragon, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, bishop e3, knight f6, bishop c4, castle, castle, and now we can play knight takes e4. It's quite normal because we eliminate white's central pawn and by doing so we gain the option of using in the future our pawn, our central pawn. Yeah, we're regaining material and this is something really nice. Knight takes e6, b takes e6 and the fork is regaining material and giving black a nice position. So as you have seen, this idea is quite common. It appears in a variety of forms with white, with black, more most commonly used in e45 positions. We are going to use it as white, as black, but this is something you are really interested in getting in your repertoire. Okay, so thank you for your attention and see you next time. Goodbye.